Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Richard Shapiro. I'm part of the uh, melanoma program here representing surgery. Thank you for coming and thank you for inviting me. Uh, so what about surgery and melanoma? So surgeons get involved in the treatment of melanoma patients primar primarily after the patients are diagnosed. If you look at the lower uh, circle, dermatologists and primary care physicians uh, are the, usually the first people to interact with melanoma patients. And in fact, some of them can uh, really take care of uh, all of their needs. Uh, medical oncologists usually get involved with patients with melanoma when melanoma has spread or returned. And surgeons uh, get involved with melanoma patients when the melanomas are over one millimeter in thickness uh, or if lymph nodes are involved. But for the most part, melanoma is a multidisciplinary uh, treatment disease. So there are, you're going to hear about a lot of terrific uh, developments in the treatment of metastatic melanoma, uh, but for the most part, melanoma we consider, I consider, a surgical disease in that surgery alone is curative in about 95% of patients. And as Dr. Polsky just said, when this disease is caught early, it's eminently curable by simple excision. Now, the thickness of the melanoma is one of the most important uh, prognostic factors we have, and we know that increasing melanoma thickness is associated with increased aggressiveness, its ability to spread, and decreased survival. And so when we biopsy a lesion that's thought to be a melanoma, it's really important to us that we, number one, make a diagnosis, and number two, know the lesion thickness in millimeters because that lets us know how serious the melanoma is apt to be and what we need to treat you. And so a complete excisional biopsy where the melanoma is completely removed gives us everything. It gives us a diagnosis and it gives us the thickness of the melanoma as well as some other histologic characteristics. Incomplete excisions are not quite as good. Punch biopsies, shave biopsies, incisional biopsies, uh, have to be interpreted uh, very carefully because sometimes they don't give us all the information we need to treat the patient. Melanoma is staged the way other tumors are. It's incredibly complicated. This is just to show you sort of how a worksheet looks like. It's constantly being revised. This was a revision done many years ago uh, to include uh, other categories uh, in the melanoma. And it's actually going to be revised again and published in the next few months. But essentially, practically, we think about melanoma being four stages. Stage zero is in situ melanoma. The melanoma cells are there, but they cannot spread yet. Stage one are thin melanomas that are invasive, but under a millimeter thick. Stage two are invasive melanomas with adverse features that let us know that they may be more biologically aggressive or thicker melanomas. Stage three is spread to the lymph nodes, and stage four is spread to distant sites. And again, what makes melanoma so different than basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas is the way that it spreads. Basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas, there are hundreds of thousands or millions of cases a year. They spread by local extension, and they're locally destructive. So if you scrape them off and get one cell away from them, you're good to go. Melanomas don't work like that, and other tumors such as basal Merkel cell carcinomas, which we also have an interest uh, here at NYU, also spread this way in that they can form something called satellites, which is almost unique to cancer. The little black dots you see around those three melanomas developed in patients that had incomplete excisions or narrow excisions. And so how far around the melanoma you do you need to go to get rid of all those satellites so that this doesn't happen? Because once this happens, the melanoma is very difficult to cure. So how far around you go to get rid of a melanoma has been studied for the last 100 years around the world. Uh, in 1907, five centimeter or two and a half inch margins were recommended. In 1962, they said you needed five or six inch margins around a melanoma. And in 1977, Breslow uh, challenged the concept that we're overdoing it. We don't need to go so widely. We don't need to disfigure so many patients to really control the melanoma. And if you look in this table on the right, you can see that there were many studies done for thin melanomas uh, that showed that it didn't really matter how far around you went to have local recurrence rates that were very low. And so the World Health Organization did a very nice study in 1980 where they randomized patients to wider, narrow melanoma excisions. And there was also a very good study in the New England Journal of Medicine several years ago looking at thicker melanomas with narrow and wide margins. And this information is just there in case anybody asks about it. 
But essentially what all of our studies are showing is that while narrow margins may lead to an increased local recurrence, there may not be a meaningful impact in survival. Uh, so that the guidelines that you know, are in agreement now for most of us are the following, that for inside two melanomas, we remove them with a five millimeter margin. There are some dermatologists that are looking at Mohs surgery uh, to remove this, which is even narrower than five millimeter margins, but in my opinion, the recurrence rates are unacceptably high. For melanomas that are less than a millimeter thick, we remove them with a one centimeter margin. For melanomas that are one to four millimeters thick, we would usually employ a two centimeter margin, and for melanomas that are greater than four millimeters thick, we would prefer a three centimeter margin if we can get it. And these are rough guidelines, and this is what most surgeons would recommend to treat a patient. We know that melanoma spreads to the lymph nodes very avidly, although it can spread all over the body. And so that's the reason why, as surgeons, we're very interested in what we do with the lymph nodes in patients with melanomas. And removing melanoma lymph nodes is done for many reasons. One, to stage the patient to see how far the melanoma is spread before we treat them. It can cure certainly a number of patients. It can also remove large amounts of tissue uh, so that the medical oncologists have less disease to work with. And so you can see here, this is a patient that had a six inch lymph node under their arm when we removed it. And we know from many studies now that when the lesion or the lymph node is palpable, when you can feel it, the survival is not as good as when a lymph node is removed when the disease is microscopic, and that makes sense. And so when we remove melanoma, surgeons will say that we're doing it therapeutically when we know that the melanoma is in the lymph node clinically. We can feel an enlarged lymph node, and we've proven that on a needle biopsy. And we know that in those patients, if we remove the lymph nodes, they seem to do better. But when we used to remove lymph nodes electively, meaning we don't know what's going on in them, they feel normal and we're just removing them anyway, we don't really see a benefit in doing this. And again, there have been literally hundreds of studies now looking at this with a wide local excision versus elective lymph node dissection. And you can see on the right two columns, the survivals are all over the place. And so in the late 1980s and early 90s, uh, we started to think about can we just select patients that have microscopic disease in the lymph nodes and just treat them a little bit differently. And so Donald Morton's group in 1992 at the John Wayne Cancer Institute proposed the sentinel lymph node biopsy technique, which has now really changed the entire field of surgical oncology and has become mainstay in tumors such as melanoma, breast cancer, Merkel cell carcinoma, and others. And the idea is through a large prospectively randomized trial that NYU was uh, participating in in the initial studies, what we do is essentially we can inject a radioactive dye around the melanoma site and see where that dye goes. And this dye gets caught in the first lymph node that we call the sentinel lymph node that's draining the skin where the melanoma is forming. And it makes that lymph node radioactive for several hours in a very harmless way. And so we're able to take a Geiger counter during surgery and pick out that one lymph node of interest and remove that lymph node and leave the others alone. And the reason to do that is that the more we monkey around in someone's armpit or their groin, the greater likelihood there is that we cause swelling of that limb called lymphedema, which is a very dreaded complication. The lymphocentigraphy or the lymph node scan doesn't tell us that there's melanoma there. It just lets us know where to look, the most logical place to look. And so what happens is we have a Geiger counter, we remove the lymph node, and we want to see the radioactive counts in that area decrease by 90%, and we know that we've gotten the correct lymph node. In about 2.4% of patients, there are two or three lymph nodes there that are taking up the dye. So we remove the lymph node and then we scan the area quickly to make sure the counts go down by 90%. If they don't, we look for a second lymph node there. This is just a thing of the technique. Uh, and essentially what we do is we get the blue lymph node out uh, we take it to the pathologist while the patient's sleeping, and typically what we do is we remove the lymph nodes, send it to the lab, then we remove the melanoma while the patient's still under anesthesia, and unfortunately what usually happens is we're done with the operation and we're screaming over the intercom at the pathologist to let us know is the lymph node clean or not before we move on. If the lymph node is clean, we don't touch the other lymph nodes, the operation's over, uh, if the lymph node is involved and there's a lot of melanoma in it, we think about removing more lymph nodes while the patient's still here. 
So if there's gross metastasis in it, if there are big black globs and melanoma in it, we know there's a lot of melanoma there, and we know that there's a 20% chance that other nodes will be involved. So in that situation, we'll frequently clean out the whole area or do what we call a complete lymph node dissection. Uh, we have a lot of uh, very good techniques now where we can identify single cells in the lymph node. We can use the standard stains of H&E. We can use immunohistochemistry stains such as S100 and HMB45. We can also do reverse PCR, and we can find one or clusters of melanoma cells in the lymph node. Um, and we just don't want to remove all the lymph nodes for a lot of reasons because any complication is important to us, um, and things can happen intraoperatively to patients during this procedure. Postoperatively, again, the thing that we're most concerned about is lymphedema, which occurs in 1% to 5% of patients, uh, or sometimes we can even miss the metastatic lesion in the lymph node and have to go back. So the ideal people that we look for to perform sentinel lymph node biopsies on are patients with melanomas that are one millimeter thick, uh, that have no other evidence of spread, and that we're able to map with our lymphocentigraphy test. Less than ideal candidates are those that have had the melanoma resected already, which makes the mapping procedure less accurate. Uh, people that have dye that scatters all over the place, which happens in about 5% of patients, we can't accurately decide where the lymph node's going to be found. Patients that have lymph nodes that are very close to the primary melanoma, so the patients that have lymph node that have melanomas, excuse me, on the cheek, sometimes the lymph node is right there, and it can be very difficult to figure out where the lymph node is compared to the melanoma. We don't perform uh, this patient with our blue dye in patients that are pregnant, but we will use the radioactive dye technetium. And so that's a really uh, important point. So we will perform a sentinel lymph node biopsy in a patient with melanoma that's pregnant uh, safely with the technetium dye. And remember, melanoma is one of the commonest uh, cancers we see in pregnant women. Um, and so it's very important uh, that we know that we can do that. So just a question that I was asked the last trip, what do we do with melanomas that are thin? Do we do sentinel lymph node biopsies in those patients? That always comes up. Um, and so when you look, and again, it's a busy table, that we know that metastases to lymph nodes are extremely rare in melanomas that are less than 0.76 millimeters thick. But mel met melanoma metastases do occur when the melanomas are between 0.75 and 1 millimeter. And so we look and we try to see, are there any histologic features in those melanomas that would make us more worried that they would spread? And it seems to be that melanomas that show ulceration, mitotic rates greater than one, mitosis meaning they're dividing under the microscope when we look at them, melanomas that seem to be invading lymphovascular spaces under the melanoma, or melanomas that seem to be transected or scooped out uh, by the dermatologist or the surgeon that did the biopsy and there appears to be melanoma under it, or sometimes young patients we get concerned about. And so our guidelines for sentinel lymph node biopsy at our medical center are the following. We don't usually offer it for melanomas that are point, patients with melanomas that are 0.8 millimeters or less. We do offer it for one millimeter or greater. And when you're between 0.8 and one millimeter, it's sort of a case-by-case -case basis looking at adverse histologic features or things in the melanoma that make us a little bit worried about that patient. So just to summarize, and I know it's a lot, so for stage zero or in site two melanomas, we remove them with a five millimeter margin that can be done in the office most of the time under local anesthesia. The chance that it comes back is, is almost zero. Stage one melanoma patients are treated with a one centimeter margin that's done usually with some local anesthesia with some sedation. We consider performing sentinel lymph node biopsies in those patients that have uh, aggressive features in the melanoma or people that have been incompletely biopsied. For stage two patients, those are thicker invasive melanomas. We perform them with a two centimeter margin and a sentinel lymph node biopsy. For patients with stage three melanomas, uh, we would remove the lymph nodes completely if the lymph nodes are palpable or if you can feel them. And we do offer radiation treatment to the area if the metastases is extensive. And in stage four patients, we remove selected isolated sites of disease such as lung nodules, nodules in the liver, and then refer them to our medical oncology um, colleagues. I know it covered a lot. I'll be happy to answer any questions later. Thank you for your attention.